In this video, I just want to give you guys some tips about how to know whether you're studying the proper things about epithelial tissues. Um, there are multiple types of questions that can be asked about epithelial tissues. And what I did was brainstorm and see if I could come up with all of the questions that could possibly be asked about an epithelial tissue. Now, what most people do when they're studying tissues is they just look at the tissue like this one here and say, oh, that's simple cuboidal epithelium. And then they move on and they don't realize that those aren't the only questions that could be asked. So let's address some of the questions that could be asked using multiple epithelial tissues. So um, one of the questions that I could ask or your lab instructor could ask is name the general category of tissue. And remember that there are four categories of tissue. There are epithelial tissues, also called epithelia. There are connective tissues. There's nervous tissue and muscular tissue. So don't get lost in the trees and forget that the forest is that this is an epithelial tissue. And you should be able to tell epithelial tissues by the free apical or apical surface. And then you are going to have the cells right close together. And generally, you can see a basement membrane to greater and lesser degrees. So all of these are categorized as epithelial tissues. Good? OK, so all of these are epithelial tissues. And I'll point out some things about them in just a minute. And then what most people, the only question that a lot of people are expecting is um, name the specific tissue. So a picture like this comes up, and they're like, oh, OK, I got that one. That's simple columnar epithelium. And it is, and you would be right. But that's not the only question that you can ask. So, but of course, you do need to be able to identify the tissue. So that's simple columnar epithelium. Um, the one at the red arrow right here is what? That's simple squamous epithelium. Um, this is stratified columnar epithelium. This is transitional epithelium. So that question most people are ready for. But they may not be ready for this question, which is any modified or specialized structure. Like, what is number one pointing to if, for instance, I said name this structure? Um, that would be microvilli. Whereas if I said name the structure um, at C on this one, that would be cilia. But what about B? What's this structure? Those are goblet cells, OK? So all of the modified structures are fine. Um, and then don't forget that the inside of a tube here is called a lumens, and that's a fair question as well. You should be able to identify surfaces. Instead of name the structure, what if I said name this surface at number one? Then that would be the apical or apical surface. And the surface down here would be the basal surface. And sometimes the basal surface is super easy to see because, of course, it changes tissue types right there. Um, so apical and basal surface. And then you should also be able to find the basement membrane, especially in situations where it's really, really evident. Like here's the basement membrane. I'll draw it around here for you. Draw the basement membrane all the way around. That's the basement membrane. Well, I missed it on part of it, but I got most of it. OK, so um, then here is the one that students tend to be very, very poor at. Um, if you're just memorizing tissues and you're not figuring out why they look like that, for instance, you are missing a big portion of histology. So what you are going to need to be able to do is to name a specific body location. And this is really important. Name a specific body location right here. And you are going to have to practice with the naming a specific body location. So let's practice a little bit and see if you guys can get this. So name a specific body location for this tissue, which means, of course, you have to be able to identify the tissue. This is moist stratified squamous epithelium. So you can't get away with saying mouth. You have to say the lining of the mouth because the mouth has lots of different tissues in it. You can't get away with saying vagina. You have to say the lining of the vagina. You can choose any location, but when you say a body location, you have to play magic school bus to get me to the right place, right? Don't be general in anatomy because general is not going to get you the points that you want. So how about this one? This is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Where would you find this tissue? 
this tissue is found lining the upper respiratory tract. Notice I said lining, okay, not upper respiratory tract. How about this, this tissue right here? This is transitional epithelium. Where do you find this? Lining uh, a lot of the urinary tract, including the urinary bladder and portions of the urethra and the ureters. Okay, so you have to be specific. You don't have to know every body location. You have to know one that is very specific, which means this would probably be a fill in the blank instead of a multiple choice, because with multiple choice, you would have to memorize them all. Okay, and then last but not least, don't forget that there are simple questions that can be asked, and they don't mean to throw you, but sometimes when you're unprepared for them, they do throw you. Like for instance, the simple thing of what is this? Well, that's a nucleus, right? And this is the cell membrane that's around the nucleus, right? So this is an epithelial cell. Don't forget that epithelial tissues are made of epithelial cells. Got it? Okay, so that's your study tip. If you go through multiple iterations of the same tissue and answer all of these questions over and over again, you'll start to build quite a bit of confidence.